Brothers and sisters, we have the pleasure of being uh, with Reverend Dennis Dillon, a longtime friend, and uh, we worked together over many years. Uh, Reverend Dillon is a world traveler. Uh, he has been uh, advising and uh, bringing his people, uh, which is the black community, to understand that we must uh, be economically, uh, culturally, uh, and spiritually connected with our ancestors. And that has been his work. He's just coming back from Africa. Uh, I think he traveled to several countries in Africa, developing uh, economic ties and cultural and ties and uh, working with the brothers and sisters there. We were talking, uh, and uh, even though this is not a full introduction of your work, you, you have been doing work for at least 30 years here in Brooklyn, around the world that I know of. Uh, but we were talking about the coronavirus 19, and uh, you had a very interesting insight that I think all of our people need to understand and to see uh, and check out. So without further ado, I want to bring uh, Reverend Dennis Dillon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Minister Brown. And uh, it's it's indeed a pleasure to to be with you and to talk with, with your audience. I, I am grateful uh, just to see you, to see how well you look and and to see that god's blessings are are uh measured in fullness upon you yes indeed we we are in uh this pandemic that uh we call the coronavirus covid 19. uh the root word for corona actually is crown so it is interesting that we're talking about the crown virus that started in 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 Yuhan, uh, China, that's that's uh, very east in China, and journeyed all the way uh, west uh, to uh, the westernmost parts of uh, of of Europe, uh, mm -hmm. and, and uh, first uh, devastated and impacted uh, places like Italy and uh, mm -hmm. and and uh, Spain and. Uh, uh, then UK and France and Germany, Belgium. Um, interestingly enough, those are the so-called crown um, uh, states. If we go back and study the concept of what is called the feudal uh, crown, uh, the countries who organized and feuded over land and territory and then put a system in place called feudalism, and the system that they put in place was designed not just for them to fight and power and overpower and overwhelm each other, but then when they recognized that that wasn't giving them success, they journeyed to the Americas uh, after they journeyed to the continent of Africa and the whole journey of, of colonization uh, through the so-called age of discovery began. So it's interesting for me just understanding this journey of this crown virus or this corona virus. So let's not kid ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not uh, by accident, this is certainly a part of that which has been prophesied in Scripture that we're literally seeing come to fullness in 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 this season. Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask you if you would uh, pull out some of the scriptures and compare them with what is happening. And uh, you made reference to the virus uh, having a more or less a a more devastating impact uh, on uh, on Europeans than on Africans, and you showed me uh, some charts that underline the points that you were making. Could you kind of go over that and uh, dealing with scripture as well? Well, well, uh, absolutely. I, I think we have to go back to um, if, if I could start just with some key scriptures. Uh, the Bible did talk about a season. 
um, of, 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 of control. If we, if we read about the church in the wilderness, uh, Daniel chapter 7 and verse 5, I think it is, that talked about the church, um, uh, you know, being in the wilderness because this beast uh, that represent a world power, or in this case, a religious political power that shall rise up and, and, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And by the way, we got to understand in modern context, uh, when we talk about modern Zion, we're talking about Africa. When we talk about modern Babylon, we're actually talking about the Babylonian system that evolved out of Europe from uh, the, 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 the from the Holy Roman Empire. And again, it's a lot for us to try to break down all of these these themes and thoughts. Revelation chapter twelve talk about twelve hundred and sixty years of the church being in the wilderness, meaning that the church itself would be the, the true church would be so suppressed that the, the, the that the false church would turn around and oppress, suppress, um, uh, repress and depress everybody in the world, particularly Africa and the Americas. We've seen that with the indigenous people in the Americas. Um, by the way, when Europe started their journey to whether it's, it's in, uh, you know, Hispaniola, um, uh, which is uh, now the Dominican Republic and Haiti, by their very presence, 60% of the population died in a couple of years. Wow. This is the kind of stuff that we're talking about. America's the same thing. Uh, so so th this is just a recircling. That's why the Bible says in Revelation chapter 18, and this is now to 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 the, the to, to, to the, the, the to Zion, to the true people of God that Bob Marley sang about. Um, to come out of Babylon, which is now what we're you know, and be not partakers of her plagues. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so, so the, the degree to which we are impacted, whether in Brazil or in America or even on the continent of, of Africa by, by this coronavirus, it is the degree to which we did not uh, uh, listen to the scripture and, and, and come out and be separate because the word of God says these plagues were going to happen, whether it's the, the Justinian plague that took place in, in, in about 541 uh, AD, or it's the, the Black Plague, as they called it, or, or the Bubonic Plague that took place uh, in about 1346 during that period. And almost every 100 years, there is a major plague that mostly devastated these so-called uh, crown powers uh, largely in Europe. The Justinian plague went from Asia to Europe. The bubonic plague plague went from from China, uh, that region, to 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 Europe. Uh, the Spanish plague a uh, uh, hundred years ago, the same exact thing, and now we're seeing the coronavirus that is following suit. It is just amazing that the scripture provided so much truth for us. And that's why we as African people have to understand that we're in a season where we have to rise. We're in a season. And by the way, this is a season for a Africa revival. And I'm talking about a spiritual revival and economic revival. By the way, revivals need to start spiritual. They rise to, an, to, to economics. They journey to politics. And then we begin to create transformation uh, and social stability in our community. We cannot miss this one. Yes, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. And when we talk about seasons, uh, the Bible says that uh, there's a season and a time for everything uh, uh, under, the sun. Mm -hmm. under the sun. There's a time to love and a time to hate. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which has been planted. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to be happy. In other words, it says that uh, everything is governed by seasons so mm -hmm. that uh, if you look at the principles which African people laid out thousands of years ago uh, and which I think uh, uh, remnants uh, of those principles you will find 
and scripture, but our people uh, created the calendar. Let me say this in terms of we call ourselves Africans, but the first Europeans to come into Africa, the Greeks, uh, at that time, uh, all of Africa was Ethiopia. And the Greeks uh, said of the Ethiopians that they were the most just and honorable people on the face of the earth and that the gods came to dwell with them. So the image that of ourselves, the image that has been stolen, uh, that has been projected to the world about us is a very negative image. Um, and we have, a, we have a lot to say about how the Europeans presented uh, uh, history and have, uh, well, let me say this, for every pancake, there's two sides. Mm. Uh, and so if you look at the principles of opposites, you can't have good without evil. You can't have up without down. Mm -hmm. And each of these, according to the scriptures, have a season. Our ancestors uh, talked about, I mean, they, they, they created the calendar, the 365 day calendar that we have uh, for a year was created by our ancestors. And that is a calendar which has four seasons, winter, uh, mm -hmm. spring, summer, fall, and there's a season for everything under the sun and but the africans also we're saying africans but in ancient time it was the ethiopians and in those old maps you can still see in those old maps where the atlantic ocean was called the ethiopian ocean mm -hmm. the ethiopian mm -hmm. sea. and uh the first and, uh, and the entire atlantic ocean as we know it today was once the ethiopian ocean Correct. And that's uh, what the Greeks said about, uh, Herodotus said about the Africans were that they were the most just and honorable people on the planet. They didn't say they were criminals. They didn't say that they were uh, ignorant. They said they were the most intelligent and honorable people, so much so that the gods came to dwell among them. So I'm just trying to throw a little bit of the image, uh, even though we say Africa. Africa is a term uh, which is uh, recent in comparison to the uh, term that Africans call themselves, you know, comedic people, so forth. But uh, in terms of the season, you're absolutely correct, Reverend Den Dennis Dillon. This is the season of the uh, Kephas, which is the rise of the Ethiopian king, which is the rise of the black man. I remember when I was in um, the me at the Million Man March, which was one of the most wonderful and peaceful and united events that I've had pleasure to be in. Me and black men together in unity and strength. Were you there? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, that's great. Absolutely, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I came home that night and cut on the TV uh, to see how they were, you know, giving an analysis of the Million Man March. And Tom Brokaw, after he finished his analysis, said that, oh, by the way, there was a new star found in the heavens tonight. I wonder if it has anything to do with the Million Man March. I remember so I, that statement too. Mm -hmm. You remember that statement? Oh, absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. So I got on the phone and called Dr. Charles Finch down at Morehouse College. And I told him what Bro Tom Brokoff had said. And he said, oh, yeah. He said, he's talking about the star Kephas. And uh, that's the Ethiopian star, which stands for the rise of the black man, which stands for the Ethiopian, the rise of the black man, because at that time we was all Ethiopians. And uh, he said that uh, that's the star that was found in the heavens. And when that star 
becomes the brightest star, the North Pole, the black man will be on the throne again. So I said, wow, does that mean that, that uh, we are on the throne? And he said, no, not yet. Uh, he said, uh, that is a protense. Uh, there will be several other happenings before we are fully on the throne. And, uh, you know, Barack Obama became the first black president. There have been several things. But at this time, the, the North Star is really Hephus. It is the brightest star in the heavens. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you, I just want to under, underpin what you're saying. You're absolutely correct. This is our time. And uh, it is our season. The European have had their season. If you look at opposites, good and evil, evil has had its season. But in the zodiac, that season is over. And we're in the season of Kephas, the rise of the black man. And, so, and, yeah, go ahead, sir. yeah, and I think it's important for us uh, to to understand that this is not just. Uh, words. We're not just talking. I, I, I know we've spent a lot of time uh, talking. Oh, it's it's a new season. It's our season. Uh, I think there are clear evidences and indications of this, and we have to understand. And I got to take things from a spiritual perspective because that is my foundation, and I'm committed to it. And I. I'm excited about it because almost everything that, that, that we've studied and researched that the Bible even talks about, uh, we're seeing the fulfillment of it. So, so le let's just look at this from a real practical perspective. Now, now, um, World of Media, um, uh, uh, the UN, almost every major world agency has already predicted that by 2050, the African population on the continent of Africa will double while we will literally see a decline in the population of Europe. That is real. In the United States of America, we are again seeing a rapid growth in the population of Africans in America. The reason why uh, white supremacy is is showing its ugly head, particularly in this season and in this time, is the level of fear that exists among whites and Europeans that all of a sudden um, the Africans are rising. Now, now it's interesting that we're seeing this kind of growth, but if you look at the growth among young people and youth population, Africa this day, right now, has the youngest population of any of the six occupied continents in the world. And America, you know, black youth are the fastest growing, you know, uh, youth population among young people in America. So, so it's real, those numbers are real. When we look at the transformation 20 years ago, you may find one black billionaire in the in in Africa. Today, you've got almost fifty black billionaires in 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 Africa. The numbers are changing. Things are changing, and so it is real. So when people like a president. Uh, 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 Donald Trump talks about uh, um, make America great again. He's realizing that the power and the control that whites had in America 30, 40, 50, 20, 30 years ago no longer exists. And the, 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 the awakening for someone like him came when a literally unknown young black man would rise to the presidency of the United States so quickly and would be the first person, first human being, first candidate in the entire America and the world to raise a billion dollars for a political campaign. It definitely speaks to the shift that is taking place and the revival that's taking place. And it's just Africans now that got to make ourselves ready for this shift that's taking place. It's real. It's unstoppable. Oh, man, I'm glad you point that out because our people need to know that this is the time 
that we have to live my art among ourselves. That is, my art is balance, harmony, truth, and justice. Mm. And if we live that way, nothing can stop us from our rise uh, because the more you live my art, the more you live in truth and harmony and justice, you suppress the mm. ego. And if you remove the ego, then God speaks through you. It's not you who's speaking, but mm. it is God who is speaking because that is really who the enemy is fighting against. He's fighting against God. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. and, and the people of God. We are an expression of that God energy. Everything is an expression of God energy because there's only one source of energy. There's only one energy. All things come out of that one energy. And so when you suppress your ego, you allow the creator to speak through you. And whatever we as a people call forth must happen. It mm -hmm. must happen because it's not us who is calling it. It is the creator calling it through us. And that's another fear that the Europeans have. They have killed over a hundred million, much more than that. Black people in their, in this 400 years of uh, our uh, enslavement and suppression here in America. Uh, and while I'm on that subject, we survived, but not only that we survived after building America both with our hands and our mind, because that's really what happened. There's not one inch of the soil that has not been watered with our blood. And whatever America is in terms of democracy, it is that way because of the spirit and the uh, uh, intellectual and, and uh, the godliness that black people have brought uh, in their very presence uh, here in America. So yeah, they're very fri uh, frightened that black people are rising and uh, they want to, Donald Trump's thing is make America great again, but America was never great. It has always been uh, warring among itself. Uh, and even here in America, uh, black people of the, the colored soldiers from the 25th uh, Corps uh, are the people who struck the most profound blow in the Civil War. We fought in every war. But in the Civil War, where they're talking about bringing down these statues, uh, Robert E. Lee and so forth. But it was black troops who captured Richmond, Virginia, the capital of the Confederacy, ran Robert Lee out of Richmond, Virginia, mm -hmm. and captured him at Appomattox and uh, held him until... Uh, Grant could come uh, where he surrendered to Grant. And in, in the movie Lincoln, you didn't see not one black soldier uh, in that final scene where Grant was, uh, where Lee was captured, but it was blacks who captured him. Mm -hmm. So as they taken down these statues of Robert E. Lee, they should, uh, and I haven't heard this on any of these uh, broadcast, but it should always be pointed out that it was black soldiers who captured Robert E. Lee, uh, who defeated him. Black soldiers, 230,000 of them that joined the Union Army, made the difference between defeat uh, and victory when it came to uh, uh, the war and, and winning the war. It, it was the great black troops, and you have to call them black, uh, that punched a hole in Richmond's line at New Market Heights uh, and went on in uh, to, uh, to capture Richmond, Virginia. Uh, if people will point that out, 
how you then gonna put up the statue of the man who was defeated and who was uh, uh, committed treason and who went against the U.S. What Grant should have did when he came down the Appomattox to arrest Robert E. Lee should have hung him, uh, and we wouldn't be going through all of this that we're going through today. Uh, the country would have been much better off. So you pointed out that the virus follows the same path uh, as those who enslave African people. Can you kind of point that out? Uh, and uh, when I was talking to you, you, point, you started with uh, the Pope who gave the, uh, uh, who said it was, was all right to capture and enslave African people. As a matter of fact, uh, the world was divided between Spain and Portugal. But I want you to talk about that because uh, I, I just like the way you you lay it out. Well, I I think uh, the, 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 here's here's the the, the 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 best understanding. Um, we we have to first uh, deal with the fact that um that white supremacy has a a um a christian foundation um and i want to use christian in quotes um from the vantage point that's not all christian um things are righteous uh, so let's not mix up or mix up that which is righteous from 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 the so-called broader understanding of of what it means uh king uh, Alfonso uh, V went in in 1452. Um, the the history bears out, and he went uh, to to Pope Nicholas V for permission to go and 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 capture and conquer territories um, in 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 Africa. Uh, bear in mind as we understand the geography that um the, the 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 iberian peninsula literally touched the 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 the, the northwestern tip of africa uh, morocco um you, you know that 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 area and he wanted permission to go um south of morocco because you know if you understand those northern territories were under control already. So he wanted to go and capture other territories and the Pope granted him. And by the way, we got to understand that about five of these papal bulls were issued somewhere between 1452 and, 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 and 1495. We're now deep into the so-called Christopher Columbus, um, you know, discoveries, and it put us also into the so-called age of discovery, which took place from maybe about 400 and 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 92 uh, for maybe about uh, 25 years into the 1500. And it's interesting that the the, the 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 bull that was given this. This, this permission given by the Pope, this is what it reads. We grant you by these present documents with our apostolic authority, full and free permission to invade, search out, capture, and subjugate the Africans, Arabs, uh, Indians, and pagans and any other unbeliever and enemies of Christ, wherever they may be, as well as their kingdoms, their duchies, their counties, their principalities, and other properties, and reduce their persons, reduce them to perpetual slavery. Wow. It's, it's, it's that what, and bear in mind that we are in an era in, in Europe in particular where the papacy or the Pope had ultimate and absolute authority, not just in Rome. 
because we, if you know the, 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 the story and if you go back to the scriptures and the prophecy, you will know that there has been movements, uh, you know, in terms of occupation. At one point, um, under the, 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 the Avignon uh, papacy, there were seven um, uh, popes who actually were headquartered in France. So they occupied different areas, different places, but nonetheless, it was the papacy. That's how we walk away with the so-called, you, you know, uh, Roman Empire, the Holy Roman Empire that controlled all of, almost all of Europe until it was divided into the Eastern Roman Empire and the Western Roman Empire. Uh, so, so these are just real stuff that we're dealing with. So it's not by accident that this thing went to Italy first, where the Pope gave the decree from. It's not by accident that it then went to Spain, um, where, where, where King Alfonso occupied the Iberian region. It's not by accident that it continued up to France. And it, isn't it interesting that the seven European countries that are most, I couldn't figure it out because I started to study and to look at this and I couldn't understand how come, how come Belgium got into this? That little tiny country, Belgium, by the way, had the largest percentage of death per case of any country in the world. Belgium, out of Belgium came King Leopoldville, uh, Leo, King Leopold. That's the reason King Leopold II and, and his, his reign of terror killing almost 20 million Africans, mostly children, wow. in the so-called Congo Free States. So we have to wake up. We, we, you know, uh, once again, you know, I, I you got to forgive me. I got to go to the Word of God because that's what I'm absolutely committed to. And and the Word of God says, "Come out of her, my people, so you will not share in her sins, nor share in her." plagues for her sins are piled high before the heavens now 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 um when 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 malcolm x says the chicken come come home to to roost these are the kind of stuff that we're seeing and so we're seeing the impact of this plague we miss it if we miss the fact that God is, 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 you know, and the revival comes from us African because we have a tendency to blame everything on God. God didn't produce the plagues and God does not produce the revival either. It is us humans that will do both. God just know that it's going to happen and tell us to be prepared for it. And God remembers all the evil that different ones have done. And in the end, everybody will either do to better themselves or their own demise come as a result of the thing that they have done. And by the way, the number of people that I believe that the Europeans have actually killed in the Americas and in Africa and in Asia and along the, the passageways, including the, the, the Atlantic slave trade, exceeded 347 billion. Billion. I mean, million. Yes, million. million. Uh, I, think, I, I, I think that's easy. And what, what people don't really understand is that when you lock up a million black men uh, and the state uh, contracts these private prisoners and they're under contract to keep them 90% other words, the state, the agreement between private prisons and the state is that the state would keep the private prisons 90% full. Those brothers and sisters out of our community that fill these prisons, and most of them at early ages, and they're getting, you know, 10, 20 years uh, for 
marijuana and other crimes, which all of them should be let out of jail. And then given um, the necessities so that they would be able to recoup some of their lives, but they can't have children in these jails. So you're cutting off millions of people just from locking up black people who committed no real crimes. I mean, it's frightening when you think that these very same people who have committed this kind of murder, um, and if you look at uh, AIDS and Ebola and all these things, uh, there's enough suspicion that that was also germ warfare. What makes you think that the vaccine for the coronavirus is not also going to be a germ warfare? I'm just lifting, I'm just throwing this out here so people can think about it and think whether they want to take the vaccine or not. Because I'm hearing a lot of white folks that they ain't not taking the vaccine. And I'm I'm not telling people not to take the vaccine. I'm I'm just raising a question that the very same people, uh, for good or bad reasons, who have murdered millions, hundreds of millions of our ancestors, want you, want us, in a time when they can create vaccines that will kill some people and not other people, say people with woolly hair, they can insert uh, the gene or uh, they can manipulate it so that if you got woolly hair, uh, you die from taking the vaccine where others can take the vaccine and not die. And if, if these people have lived, have shown historically that you can't trust them, I'm suggesting now, this is just a suggestion, that you got to think twice about taking a vaccine when you know historically uh, germ warfare have been used against us. That's 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 history. So um, I just I'm just pointing it out because I think we should be very careful uh, in how we proceed. I th- I agree with you. This is our time, but just saying it's our time. Uh, we we have to take that and do the research. I mean, we got to prepare ourselves for leadership in every way. Uh, and and the young people that are killing one another and so forth. Uh, New York is talking about putting a billion dollars, taking a billion dollars from the uh, police budget, uh, but. You know, I didn't hear him say anything about uh, training uh, young black men uh, to be firemen and police uh, officers. That money should go uh, to prepare uh, young people to uh, police their own communities uh, and and uh, be leaders in their own community. Uh, there are so many programs that we need to put together ourselves for uh, this time. Because um, I'm not advising that all black people prepare to go to Africa. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, but I think that we should, and I want you to speak on this, prepare to uh, work with our ancestor uh, home. Uh, and build businesses, um, we could be some of the richest people in the world and with our just natural creativity. I mean, we're just naturally creative. And that's one of the things that uh, uh, I'd like our people uh, to uh, instill in young people that they are the very cream of the earth and the need to be 
prepare for that mm -hmm. kind of leadership. So you've been traveling over Africa. What have you seen at, uh, at this time that gives you kind of uh, hope and uh, inspiration that this is, is happening? Do you see anything that uh, confirms this unity? Yeah, well, absolutely. I, I think, you, you know, I, I talk about uh, the, the, the rise and, and, and the revival uh, that's, that's taking place, not just in Africa, amongst Africans on the continent, but certainly Africans in the diaspora. And a part of the commitment that, that we have, uh, my, my wife, uh, Dr. Zinzili, uh, Dylan and I, we have this strong, solid commitment to make sure that we're building those bridges. We need to build a solid, strong, unbreakable bridge that links the continent of Africa to Africans in, in, in this Americas. And I have broadened the scope beyond just the United States of America, because as we know, uh, the largest uh, population of Africans outside of the continent happen to be in Brazil. Um, and of course, there is uh, uh, Africans uh, all along the Americas from uh, Canada all the way down to the very tip of, of, of Chile. Um, so there are Africans and certainly uh, the Caribbean and all of that region. So, so the, the dynamics is really now forming the bond and the partnership. I'm a big believer that this is a season where we as Africans got to spend more time doing for self. We have to, number one, uh, link more through our travels to the continent. We have to invest uh, in Africa um uh from the united states from brazil from from the caribbean from elsewhere we have to build businesses there we have to begin to create a trading route for ourselves that we control that we manage and the same way we've seen other groups the koreans and others who come to america uh, go to europe the caribbean elsewhere and they are now bringing in products from their homeland um and they're selling them mostly to unfortunately us africans uh, african americans african caribbeans they're selling them to us here it is the same way we have to understand that the rich richly endowed continent with all its resources we're going to have to begin to form those linkages and and those partnerships i think that is critical in this time and i think the lord has just opened up so many doors for us but god is not going to walk through the doors for us uh, we're going to have to get to those doors ourselves my my Jamaican grandmother used to say you could lead a horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. So at the end of the day, it is really time for us to look at these kinds of linkages. And we got to look at what what is before us. Because to your point, as much as there is issues and arguments around vaccines and things of that nature, the... Let me just give us an example. Um, the percentage, we've done the, the nychristiantimes.com, nychristiantimes.com. We've actually done uh, a weekly update on, 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 on the coronavirus and its impact. We've selected 15 countries in Africa, 15 countries in Europe, and 15 countries in, 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 in the rest of the world. And of course, America stands on its own because of the impact of, of, of America. Um, and when we look at those numbers, and these are the top 15 countries in terms of cases, and when you look at the numbers, again, Europe in terms of cases is 19.5%. The rest of the world is 48.6%. I'm talking about numbers as of the 27th of June, 2020. Africa is only 3.5%. So it is not Africa that needs the vaccines, other countries. In fact, when you look at the, the, the death rate, 
between other countries, between Europe and, and Africa, the highest death toll. I can't understand this, that these so-called first world countries are so much better developed in terms of their healthcare system and everything else. But, but death in Europe is 38.4%. In the US, it's 26.9%. The rest of the world, it is 33%. Africa, is 1.7 percent so now every death is 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 one too many but folks are not dying in africa from the coronavirus 1.7 percent of all the deaths versus the us with 26 percent europe with 38 percent the largest percentage is in Europe. So Europe needs the vaccine. America may need the vaccine, but Africa doesn't need the vaccine. So all of this for me is smoke screen. Because mm. at the end of the day, the numbers don't lie. Anybody just Google right now. I mean, coronavirus update, look at cases and you will see that there are hardly anybody dying in Africa from mm -hmm. the coronavirus. Again, one death is one too many. Mm -hmm. Belgium mm -hmm. alone, listen to this, Belgium alone have had more deaths from the coronavirus than all of Africa combined. Absolutely. Mm. Now, one thing I, I, I kind of want to clear up because, you know, I, w I was in the pulpit for 15 years and used to use that King James Bible uh, to preach from before I began to really travel to Egypt with Dr. Ben and, uh, you know, see for myself. Most of what's in that Bible you can find in, uh, in Egypt written in stone on the walls uh, uh, and and uh, what the Bible is it's it it has taken uh, fragments of the African uh, story as they understood the principles of the universe and uh, presented them to us in in a European image and a European culture, uh, so that we have we have a book uh, with images that say Europeans are the uh, chosen people of God, but the first people on the planet were the chosen people of God, and that's African people. All other people really of children of their African mothers and fathers, according to the work of uh, Diop and others. Um, and all human knowledge, including speech and writing and mathematics and engineering uh, and everything, uh, really the foundation of it comes out of the African mind. And the research that was done in the genome project uh, says that Africans are the most uh, intelligent uh, and have the most uh, probability of genius and creativity than any other people. And this was research that was done out of Yale University. And in fact, Dr. KK Kidd, Kenneth Kidd, who headed up that research I did an interview with him uh, to determine from him who headed the research itself, what did it mean when they said that Africans have, uh, that Europeans have six uh, uh, DNA strands and Africans had nine. Uh, and what he said to me was that if you, have two dice and you throw them, 
the maximum you can get from those two dice is 12. But if you have three dice and you throw them, the maximum you can get from those three dice is uh, 18, 6, 12, 18. And that's the difference, and that's what it's like uh, between black and white. Uh, black people are older. Uh, they have been here since the beginning, and they have everything in the genetic code. Uh, Europeans uh, who evolved out of African people uh, are like the six dice. You, you only can get so much from the six dice. Uh, you know, the two dice, uh, six and six is 12. But the Africans, you can get a much broader, uh, not only uh, DNA fulfillment in terms of uh, its, uh, its genetic makeup, uh, but you have a greater potential for genius and creativity. If you had, what he said was if you had a, a thousand whites and a thousand blacks, you're gonna get creativity and genius in both groups, but you will get more genius and more creativity out of the 1,000 group Africans than you would out of the 1,000 group Europeans. So I think it's important for our people to understand that we have been, uh, we have been capped uh, something similar to the flea. A flea can jump 80 times its height which is the equivalent of a six foot man jumping over a building that's 480 foot tall or a football field and a half jumping over it in, in its length. Uh, but if you take that same flea and put a lid on the flea at 20 feet, he will, the flea will jump and hit his head to the top and he'll keep doing that until finally he'll just give up. And when he gives up, you can take the lid off the jaw and he will never be able to jump uh, beyond the 20 feet of the top of that jaw. But the sad part about it is that the children from that flea will only be able to jump 20 feet. So, we we are kind of like the flea, uh, you know, and you could do the same thing with a shark. You can take a 14 foot shark, you put him in an aquarium, and if you get him to reproduce, the children from that 14 foot shark will only grow three or four feet. And even if you take the children and put them back in the ocean, their offsprings will only grow three or four feet. So without the intervention of the creator mm -hmm. to restore that original ability, we would always be in the jar. And that's why our children, uh, our young men kill each other and so forth because they have been kept in that jar. But we have the spirit of the creator in us. And we have the ability and the intelligence as has been proven by all the research that has been done uh, to unlock that ability that has been captured. And that's what the preaching and the teaching and all of the things that we now have to go to uh, to, uh, to develop this potential that we have, because we have. The creator has given it to us, and we don't have to stay in that job. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was just pointing out that the Bible is really uh, full of historical African wisdom and understanding. And so we don't have to necessarily throw it away. We need to start where we are and teach the history uh, of uh of that transformation, how the remnants of this African culture has been embedded uh, in, uh, in the Bible. It was Europeans who actually wrote this Bible, 
uh, and that's a, a, a recent, the King James Version is a recent uh, work. I, I don't know if um, if King uh, uh, Son is, is with us. I see him sitting there. King Son, can you move closer? Because he can tell us some of the uh, books that the, the Bible actually uh, was was taken from. Uh, King Son? King Son? Okay. Uh, he was he can give us some of the ancient African literature. Um, so I could just share this while he's positioning himself. Um, uh, but I, I think uh, it is such a key critical uh, point, uh, some key points that you've raised. I want to go back to one of the, 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 the most profound um, prophetic words uh, from uh, Bob Marley when he says, emancipate ourselves from mental slavery for none but ourselves can, can free our minds. I think a big part of what we have to do and to look at, and, and that is, <clears throat> We have to liberate ourselves from the from the Europeanization of of the Bible or the Europeanization of Christianity. Uh, the Bible didn't start in Europe. The Bible is not from Europe. The Bible was not written in Europe, and no one from Europe wrote any of the Bible. That's the reality. That's everybody's reality. That's even the Europeans' reality. Now, some things have been misinterpreted. Some things have been. Uh, rewritten, some names have been changed, adjustments have been made. There's no question about that. Uh, when we go back to the King James Version um, th th that came about in 1611, uh, th those are points and factors that we obviously have to look at. But again, when you go back, and this is just the Bible now, I don't have to go to any other book for this. The fact of the matter, when you look at Shem, Ham, Japheth, um, this is just the Bible. And, and we look at those three generations, the Shemites, uh, the, the Hamites, the Japhetites, the only of those groups that could you know, conceivably produce the Caucasian race would be the Japhetites. Uh, and they're nowhere to be found in the scriptures, in the Old Testament scriptures, any place at all. They came on the scene through the Greeks, as you rightly stated. And that is during an intestament, the intertestamental period, when parts of the Bible were not even put in when it came back to us from Europe. So I think there's just so much um, that we need to uncover. I, I love the, the idea that it is the truth that shall liberate us. And, and I would certainly love to hear what our brother have to say and what his thoughts are on this. But I, I think at the end of the day, um, um, there is just such an abundance of information. My biggest uh, passion, uh, Minister Brown, and my biggest uh, commitment is, is uh, to ensure that Africans have a body of information and knowledge that for so long have been hidden from us. Uh, how do we really get back to this knowledge and how do we uh, begin to see our journey to a greater level of freedom, economic freedom, political freedom, social freedom, and most certainly and foundationally spiritual freedom through all of this information that has been shared uh, because it is so much. But very clearly, um, the, 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 the chosen people, I shared with you already that the reality is when we understand the chosen people, it, 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 it was never a European people because obviously um, uh, th th that reality did not exist geographically. Uh, it did not exist in terms of uh, uh, the genealogy or the process of of of, of how people evolve, uh, particularly coming from Shem Ham and Japheth. So, it, it's 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 a good conversation and it's a good argument to speak of any European group as the chosen, but but it's 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 biblically unscriptural it's talmudically unscriptural and clearly it is quranically unscriptural as well it doesn't it doesn't fit 
uh, in 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 any of 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 those books. Reverend Dennis Dillon, we appreciate you. We're going to let you go, but we're looking forward to continuing this dialogue with you. Um, I can't thank you enough. Uh, and again, I, I, I want to thank you on behalf of all of our people for your commitment, your work, your dedication, and your leadership. Again, thank you. Now, if there's a last word that you want to speak to our people, please do. I, I, I just want to say it is it is a pleasure and always a pleasure to be with you. You're, you're, you're just such a great historian and you spend so much um, time really talking to our people about all of these relevant issues. I want to encourage everybody to, to be safe, to be, to be careful, and particularly in this time when we're dealing with a double pandemic of, of, of uh, racism, uh, rising to another level and another level of 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 uh, white supremacy, that it is important that we be vigilant and that we all help to shape this Africa revival uh, that is getting ready to break. It has already begun, but it is getting ready to break at a, an even greater level. God bless you. And again, uh, we do Africa all the time as soon as. Uh, we're clear to travel again. We'll be on our way to Africa. I know your daughter is planning to make the trip with us. And yeah. certainly um, all the others who want to come uh, to Africa with us our next trip, we will certainly let you know when that will be. Thank you, sir, and God bless you, and you stay well. Thank you. Thank you. And good night. Good night. All righty.